Every time when I thought about Nepal before this video, it was my home. Yes, it was the home I got married into. But suddenly this feeling of belongingness that I got from everyone around was delightful. But I remember there was a dog that was pooping right next to my foot and I'm scared of dogs, right? So this dog is like right here and I called up my driver Dai. I said, Dai, please, aunu, aunu, kuku, lai, bhagaunu. And I would also put on lipstick. In the video, I forgot to wear lipstick and I think that's really important. So I think this entire juxtaposition of emotions is what made the video successful. Exactly one year ago today, this happened. And today, I'm back at Patan Darbar Square to talk a lot about my favorite, favorite viral video, Seven Reasons to Never Ever Visit Nepal. Let's go. Yes, I have faced hatred because of the title. I think a lot of people initially, before they actually saw the video, gave me a lot of very negative comments uh, because they thought that I'm an outsider who's talking negative about Nepal. Uh, I got this one message I remember immediately as soon as the video released from this man who was like, why are you writing all of this? If I find you on the roads of Kathmandu, I will beat you up and things like that. But then after two hours, he's like, sorry ma'am, sorry ma'am. I'd like to treat you for coffee. I'm so sorry I said all those horrible things to you. And you're doing a great job for us. So I did get a lot of hatred, but that was only from people who were judging the book based on the cover and did not actually open it inside. And maybe also people who don't understand sarcasm at all. Uh, life has been just the same. The only difference is that a lot more people come up to me in supermarkets and while I shoot asking for selfies. So that's one thing that happens. Another thing, I've got a lot more people commenting on my Facebook. So that popularity possibly is the only difference. Apart from that, I'm just doing what I do. I'm working, creating content and doing a lot of training and coaching. So yeah, that's that. I would uh, add one more point really. I think I would add a point on adventure. I think I missed that uh, because there's so many wonderful different adventure sports that you can do in Nepal. And I don't know how I missed adding that. So I think I would add that. And I would also put on lipstick. In the video, I forgot to wear lipstick. And I think that's really important. I can't think of any particular moment that was delightful as such, but I felt a delightful feeling, you know. Every time when I thought about Nepal before this video, it was my home, yes, it was the home I got married into. But suddenly this feeling of belongingness that I got from everyone around was delightful. So a lot of people, who, you know, the Nepali diaspora, Nepali people who live abroad started inviting me to their home. Somebody said, okay, when you come to the Netherlands, you can come and stay in our house. You are like our daughter. There's, there's somebody uh, who's been inviting me to his house in America. He's saying, you know, you've done more for Nepali community than a lot of people have. So please come and stay with us whenever you come to America. Our homes are open to you. Our hearts are open to you. And, you know, truly, when I think about these kind of moments, it makes me feel more than just pride. It makes me feel more than just happy. It makes me feel now that maybe there's a sense of responsibility attached because of the kind of love and this overwhelming support that I received. So it's not so much moments as it is like this feeling of belongingness and the feeling of becoming like a daughter rather than a daughter-in-law. So that's been amazing for me. Oh my God, I can't actually think of the best comment, but this video is full of thousands and thousands of amazing comments. Some people tell me, you know, you've done more for Nepal than a lot of people have. Some people are like, let's make her the brand ambassador of the country. Some people say things like, oh, thank you so much for showing me a Nepal that I hadn't seen in spite of having lived here all my life. So these are the wonderful comments that I got. But you know, here's the point. Every once in a while, let's say every three or four months, I just look through my video and I look through all the comments that I got there. And every time it makes me cry, you know, just these wonderful messages of love make me cry with happiness and, and the sense of belongingness every single time. So it wasn't one particular comment. It was a lot of different things that people said that just bring tears to my eyes every single time. After this video went viral, I've been to Khapkar, Janakpur and Pokhara. Uh, what I realized was, and I went to all these three places within a month. So what I realized was, we talk a lot about diversity, right? And I actually got to experience that diversity firsthand within one month when I went to Janakpur, which is completely different from, let's say, a Khaptar, which is completely different from a Pokhara. So the entire conversation about having these diverse places in Nepal is completely true. And I realized it within that month. 
See, I am a speaker, right? So for me, being known as a speaker is most important. Whether it's a transformational speaker, whether it's a corporate trainer, whether it's a communications coach. Seven Reasons is just something that happened. Yes, it gave me a lot of popularity overnight, but I identify more as a speaker and that's what really gives me joy. I haven't seen all that much of the country. I'm going to answer this question in four parts, okay? Favorite place to live? Undoubtedly Kathmandu. Favorite place to go and chill for a while? Definitely Pokhara. Favorite place in terms of beauty and in terms of peace and quietness? Has to be Khaptar, like of all the places I've been to. And favorite place that's on my travel wish list but I haven't been to yet? Has to be Raratal. It, it is something that I have to experience in this life sometime. There wasn't too many because the shoe did not last very long. But I remember there was a dog that was pooping right next to my foot and I'm scared of dogs, right? So this dog is like right here and I called up my driver Dai. I said, Dai, please, aau nu, aau nu, kuku lai, bhagao nu. Why does that matter? That matters me. Dai, hata, I didn't put the And so we waited for the dog to do his thing and then we had to resume shooting. So that was really hilarious. But the dog kept on coming back. I don't know why. So that was there. That's the only thing that really happened. Uh, two reasons. Number one, the title itself. You know, because a lot of people told me the moment they read the title, they got really angry and that made them click on it. So the title itself was really catchy because of the whole negative angle. And then when you went into the video, you got really emotionally connected because you went in experiencing anger, but you came out experiencing joy. So I think this entire juxtaposition of emotions is what made the video successful. I don't think I'm creative enough to come up with a better name than that. I think that was honestly the best name for this particular video. Also because of the way I put in the context. So I can't think of anything. Thank you so much to you for all your wonderful questions and this interaction. I really enjoyed sort of reliving that moment. And thank you to each one of you, around the 50 lakh of you who watch this video across different social media platforms and different mediums. Thank you so much. It means a lot that you have accepted me as one of your own and you have accepted my voice and my thoughts into your lives. Thank you.